Welcome back everybody to another brand new video where we are continuing with our 1600 Sport trying to squeeze a bit more power out of it. So if you missed part one, we took the engine out, split the cylinder head off it and could see the bores are absolutely knackered in it. So I started stripping it down and while I was doing that, I was working out my high school maths in my head, what we could do. I want to keep this a 1600 Sport. I don't want to bore those cylinders out too far. So I worked out plus 30 pistons in there, takes us to 1629cc, plus 60 pistons takes us to 1660cc. Now that's over what I want to go, I want to keep it under 1650. So using 1.3 pistons, each piston crown, the combustion chamber in the piston, is 4cc's less on 1.3 pistons. So across the board, take that 16cc off, we're down to 1645cc, which is ideal, keeping it a 1600 Sport. Now once it was stripped, having a look at the crank, it's absolutely knackered. There's a groove you can feel with your fingernail on the journals, so that needs regrinding. Also the pistons, they've got a lot of scoring, but luckily we're going to change those anyway. Next it was off to the head to start stripping that down. After stripping it, there's even more bad news. The valve guides, some are good, there's no play, some are really bad. Just have a look how much play is in that. The machine shop's got a lot of work they need to do on this head. The exhaust face needs re-skimming. I just don't know how that sealed before, it just slopes right off. Also, I'm fitting double valve springs, so the spring seats need to be machined for that and lower because we've got a big cam going in it. But first I'm going to port it, just in case I slip with the tool and mark any of the faces. And yeah, then the block, the crank, and this head is going for a lot of work. So fast forward three and a half months, we're ready to put our engine back together. So while I sent it off, uh, I thought I'd get a quick job in. That job turned into several jobs. And yeah, the block's been sat here for three months. A tip for you, no matter how damp free you think your workshop is if you have some machine work done and the engine comes back just build it straight away the the top had started to not rust but you know surface corrosion same in the bores as well i've cleaned it up as best i can the shop had to take a lot really off the top of this to get it flat so we can't take any more off but yeah it's come up enough so we can use it the crank i had to send back because it got reground, I had to send back to get it repolished because yeah, that had pitted as well. So yeah, if you get anything, just build it straight away. The head is back. They had to take quite a lot off this exhaust face. Hopefully it's not going to lead to problems, you know, the way the exhaust sits, it's not going to come too close to the uh, gearbox and stuff. I think it was about four or five mil they had to take off that. So yeah, that ended up being a fair bit. Got our double valve springs in, bigger valves, the face has been skimmed. You see where I've ported it. Yeah, give it a lick of paint and that's all ready to go on. Now coming over here to the bits we got to fit. We got a light and flywheel, hopefully make it rev a bit quicker. Here's our crank, so you can see the journals are nice and smooth now. Now it's been repolished. And then behind that we got our Kent cam, it's a 234, so that's a fast road. Hopefully it's not going to be too lumpy and tick over. And then at the back here, I keep seeing these max peed in rods. Thought I'd go for a set. I asked Dave on the rolling road, you know, he knows engines and he swears by these. He's bought loads of sets and never had a problem with them. And you know, they're quarter of the price of other ones. So we'll give it a good test and we'll see if these are any good. And then going across, we got a vernier pulley, we got the cover. That's so we can adjust that vernier pulley in situ with the engine in, we don't have to take that cover off. Got new shells, pistons, oil filter, plugs. Got our gasket set and we've got a Burton head gasket because we're obviously plus 60 now, we need a bigger head gasket. So that's all the bits, there's a lot of money here. Let's get it in our engine, let's go. So the key to building a good engine is just keeping everything clean. So I'm going to 
brake cleaner out all this block just in case there's any little bits of grit hiding in there. I'll probably go through a whole blue roll uh, of tissue while building this engine, just wiping it and wiping it and wiping it. So the crank's in, we're going to use loads of pre-oil in this, get it nice and lubricated. We're going to put all them main bearings in and clean up all the caps and then torque that crank up. Next up, we're going to get the cam followers in before we fit the cam, not after because they don't fit in. And then slide that lovely Kent 234 fast road cam in and then lock it into place. That vernier pulley goes on with the new timing chain. I'm only using a single chain on this. I mean, I want it to make power the engine, but it's not going to be big, big power. Then we turn the engine around and get that rear main oil seal on. That's nice and new. So fingers crossed, it's not going to leak. Then it's time to go on the engine stand. So we put that back mount on, bolt it all up and then fits on the stand. Next up, we've got to build the pistons and rods. Now I've pre-gapped all the rings and they're ready to just go straight on those pistons. It's so nice working with new stuff. Got to give it a bit of a clean, but yeah, nice and tidy. So I oil up all the cylinders, get the old piston ring compressor out and start sliding them pistons in. Turn the engine over and then tighten up all the cam caps. Then getting the engine back over, I've got to set this cam so I'll put the gauge on and find TDC and fit our timing disc. Now this cam on the inlet valve, when it's fully open, the crank has to be at 103 degrees. It only needed a tiny, tiny bit of adjustment on that vernier, but then it's set all good. So that new timing cover goes on with the water pump and then we're ready to fit the head. That Burton head gasket, goes on. I always use a little bit of wow seal on those just to make it stick nice. I've never had a head gasket fail using wow seal. And then once it's all torqued up, and that is our engine, probably about halfway finished, I reckon. It looks boring in its standard blue color, um, which is what I want it to look like. I want it to look original. So if anybody opens a bonnet, they go, oh, it's a standard engine, just with a set of Webers on it. They won't know that lurking down there is, yeah, I mean, I want about 130 horsepower out of this, really. You know, that would be nice and fun in our car. There's a mess everywhere. Problem with building an engine, you have to pre-oil like everything. So just oil gets everywhere and tools. I'm going to sort that out. We're going to, what's next probably? We're going to put the strainer in the sump on and like the oil filter and dizzy. And uh, yeah, we're going to be close to banging it back in our car. It's probably gonna end up looking a bit like this. So then that's one fully built 1600 Crossflow engine, ready to go back in our Mark II Escort. So let's do it again, a bit like this. Well, hey, one engine in its hole. So as I was putting the engine back in, you think more powerful engine, we need to put that power down and stop better, which is the most important. So I've bought English rear axle with a limited slip diff, uh, rear disc brake conversion, coil over kit, stuff like that. I've not fitted it yet, so it's all still standard. Also, bought a set of twin 40 Webers, which have got to be cleaned yet. I've had them vapor blasted, but I've got to rebuild them. I was thinking, would it be, it'd be interesting to find out, I've got to do 400 miles on this and bed the piston rings in. It, I, I want to go back to the rolling road with the standard carbon with the engine done and just see how much power extra from standard we've got with just the engine. Then go come back here, fit the Webers and then go back again. It's only 40 quid for a power run and uh, I do like going and see Dave. So I think that'd be fun and just interesting to see what power figures it gets, you know, with a standard carb with the modified engine be quite cool but um, as for this video that's it we're all done and uh, yeah there's more to come on this obviously going into 2024 I want to get some of the old projects that I started finished so it might be one video a month and doing a full build like I did on the Corsa and stuff like that I've got to do the golf buggy I got that Z3 don't know if you've ever seen that one I started that in 2019 Okay, let's try on our gusset.
looks good. All those years ago, do uh, yeah, do an external cage on a car, which has been done quite a lot now. But yeah, it's something I want to get done. But yeah, more to come in the future. And I hope you've enjoyed watching the videos this year. So from me, as always, I'll see you on the next one. Ta-da.